What is amplitude modulation and how is it different from frequency modulation? This is what this video will talk about. So let's zoom into what is amplitude modulation by looking at a graph. Mm. Let's say you have an information signal coming in. This could be, say for example, a voice or music. Let's say lah, huh? voice talking, music, some audio you want to send over a long distance. Then, people come up with this idea. They say, okay, okay, we don't want to just send this signal by itself. It's going to be too messy. It's going to be everywhere. It's going to be covering all the frequency and affect everybody. So, why not we create a carrier signal at a certain frequency? So, this carrier, carrier signal will be at some higher frequency. Uh, we call this FC, la, C for carrier. And this is going to be a constant. You choose what signal, what, what carrier signal you want. Uh, what frequency you want, you stick to it. So that I know, oh, you send this wave. Uh, oh, because this is your frequency. Okay, so how do we add our information to our carrier? We want to figure out a way how to add these two together. But not exactly add, you know. So people say, okay, okay, let's, let's, let's do this. Whenever my signal is very high, like this point that I draw up here, okay, the displacement is very high, right? Then I want that to be large amplitude of the carrier signal. So I'll create a circuit to change the amplitude at that particular point, somewhere here. So that at that point, the final signal that I sent out, so I sent out or transmitted, will be large amplitude. I have modulated the amplitude, means I changed the amplitude. Okay, so this is a larger amplitude than normal. Lah. Normal is just here, ma. this is the normal. Okay, let's look at another example. Maybe at this the point down here. Wow, the information, the voice or music is negative. So I'm going to use this and say, hmm, why don't I use this information and say, okay, I want to set this as a lower amplitude of who? Lower amplitude of my carrier signal. Carrier signal just carry the signal only, okay? So at this particular point, my resultant AM signal, amplitude modulation is AM, ah, it's going to be of a very small amplitude. You see here? Small amplitude. This is a small amplitude. Why is this small amplitude? Because my displacement of information signal is negative. The other one, hmm, displacement is very positive. So I say big, big amplitude. So I make here a very big amplitude at this particular instance in time. And so I just keep going on. Whatever information is now encoded as the shape or the envelope of the AM signal. This is what we call an envelope. Because you see the amplitude is different. Envelope. And this is how we encode the information signal into a carrier signal which can be identified as the transmitter. So, oh, do you transmit this signal? Okay, what's your information? I go and decode. Okay, so I work backwards and decode that. So what do you need to know about this? Well, you need to know that this one, in conclusion, you have the same frequency. There's no change in frequency here in your carrier signal, but you are varying the amplitude to send the information that you want. So you encode the amplitude into your FM signal. So you have varying amplitude. Okay, let's look at some examples, uh, more details on how to think of AM modulation. So if you want to talk about AM modulation, let's write out what we just talked about just now. So firstly, the frequency of the carrier wave remains constant. We are not going to change the frequency. Carrier wave frequency is FC. La. But what you are changing though is the amplitude. So this one, oh, this one is definition, you got to remember. Uh, if they ask you, define what is AM, amplitude modulation, this technique, you can say it is that the amplitude of the carrier wave is made to vary in synchrony. This is an important word which you might want to include when you're writing your definition. So change in synchrony means together, vary in synchrony with the displacement of the info signal. Okay, so... Info will change the amplitude of carrier wave. 
Okay, we're going to skip this one. We'll come back to this later in a little bit. But let's look at a possible graph that they will ask you a lot in past years. So this idea of bandwidth, what is bandwidth? Ah, ah okay, let's see. So, okay, so we have an AM wave traveling in air. What if we took this wave and we want to scan the sky and look for frequency against amplitude or intensity or power, whatever that is. You will find that for that particular wave that we just modulated and create a signal for, there is a very high peak in the middle. This peak is our carrier frequency, FC. So maybe, I don't know how many hertz, la, 11530 kilohertz or something like that. Okay, Example, for example. But then you will notice that, eh, actually got small, small thing at the side also. Le. The signal maybe look like this. So there's, it's not just one single line of frequency, there's actually a little spread. So what is this spread? Well, these are what we call side bands. So the diagram on the right shows how it could look like. We have maybe like this kind of shape. These are what we call side bands. So the carrier frequency is still unchanged, but you have these extra side bands where you have a higher frequency and lower frequency. So the higher frequency, okay, from your from your carrier frequency, if you add a certain, let's use a different color. Ah, this one. Add a certain signal frequency range, you will get to FC plus FS. Just higher frequency. Lah. So maybe if this one is going to be a maximum of 10 kilohertz, then the highest frequency here, let's draw a dotted line, will be 1540 hertz. So it's a little bit spread out a bit. Why are I a bit complicated to explain why? Okay, so you can also go the other way. Lah. If it, minus FS. Then here, also 10 kilohertz, right? So this one here will be 1520 kilohertz. Now, the idea of a bandwidth is important because this one is what they'll ask you to calculate in past years. So bandwidth is then from the highest all the way down to the lowest. What is the full range? So from here to here, like what they draw. Two times of FS. So in this particular example that I sketched out, this bandwidth will then be 20 kilohertz. And this bandwidth will tell me how much information I can send. Okay. If bigger bandwidth, bandwidth, I can send more info. Yay. Okay, that's the idea of bandwidth. Lah, huh? So if they ask you to define what is bandwidth, you can say that bandwidth is the range of frequencies occupied by amplitude modulated waveform. So if you plot a graph of amplitude over frequency, your bandwidth is going to be lowest to highest. Carrier wave frequency is still the same, but there's extra sideband frequency that will come out as well in your final signal. All right. I have a diagram on the right also I draw. Lah. So bandwidth is lowest to highest transmitted. This is your bandwidth. Before moving on to other parts of this thing, let's jump straight to a pass a question to test our understanding of what is this bandwidth, bandwidth thing. And let's do a pass here together. So this is MJ13, P41, question 11. A radio station emit an AM wave for transmission of music. Very nice. State what is meant by AM wave, I.O. Which is now we just say what, how to define. So you want to say that AM wave specifically is a amplitude, is when the amplitude of a carrier wave is, what happened to the amplitude of a carrier wave? Made to vary in synchrony with what? Synchrony. Please spell this correctly. <laughs> in synchrony with your information that you are trying to send. The music, right? So with the displacement. Don't say displacement of music. Lah. Displacement of your information signal. Just memorize the definition, guys. This is bonus marks. This one, you can just write this all the time. They're pretty consistent. So one one, one mark is amplitude is made to vary in synchrony with displacement. So that is uh, displacement of information signal. I got S here. Okay, part two. 
Give two reasons why the transmitted wave is modulated rather than transmitted transmitting the information directly as radio. Ah, directly transmitted means a simple radio. Why do we bother to modulate? We also mentioned this just now, uh, not just now, in the earlier video. Why modulate? So we need two reasons. We can say that there are, the first reason is that there'll be less interference between different, different transmitters and receivers because everybody, uh, you cannot spam all the frequency into the air. We want it to modulate so that there's less interference so that more radio station. Now we're thinking in terms of radio. Radio stations can operate in one area without fighting each other and interfering each other's uh, signal. That is because each of them have their own carrier frequency. Maybe I'm like, oh, I really like this number. I want 98.8 kilohertz. That is my frequency. I will modulate the amplitude there, but you guys don't touch it. You can choose your own frequency. That's the idea of this. Okay. So number two, what are the uh, reasons why we use modulation? Benefits? Well, we can use a shorter aerial. Aerial. A oh man, I can't. Every time I spell aerial, it's spelled wrongly. Aerial. Antenna. Aerial. We use the word aerial in Cambridge. My brain keeps saying antenna. Uh, and also because your carrier frequency is quite high, so you can use a short antenna. Carrier frequency is high, but you can send a low frequency uh, modulation of amplitude on a short frequency thing. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, we only need two, but I shall mention the others as well. So the others that also we talked about earlier is the increased range with less power. This is also known as less attenuation. If we modulate something, you know, just memorize some of these points, it would be beneficial for you. And lastly, less distortion of signal. Less distortion. Okay, any of these two will give you B2. Okay, as long as you get two, you're good. So go check your notes or take some notes on this if you're not sure of this. Okay, here's the part we want to focus on. So here's a graph they show us. Looks familiar, right? The variation of frequency with amplitude of the transmitted wave is shown. What's the carrier frequency? What's the wavelength of carrier wave? Carrier frequency is going to be the peak right in the middle. So this is our FC, 909 kilohertz. But they ask us what's the wavelength. So you got to convert all. How to convert? Well, we got to remember these are electromagnetic waves. So V equals to F lambda. Speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power of 8. Frequency of carrier is the FC, ah, so that is 909 kilohertz. And you can find your lambda of carrier. Ah, so lambda carrier here will be about 330 meters. A eh, very long, eh? Dude, do you know what this means or not? Like if this is your human here, and then the wave is like one complete cycle is 330 meters. Super long. This is radio wave, guys. We're in a completely different part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So this one is, if you get one mark, find your lambda, you're good to go. Okay, other calculations. Let's go see. Calculate the bandwidth. How do you find the bandwidth? What is the bandwidth? Bandwidth is the width. You know, the width. How fat is this thing? So you look at the diagram. How do you find the bandwidth? Bandwidth goes from the lowest frequency to the highest frequency within this AM signal, this whole entire AM signal. This is our bandwidth. Also, you can call it like ah, delta frequency la, or something like that. La, okay. So here you have to see 918 to 900. So you take 918 minus 900. Lo. 918 minus 900. What do you get? 18. Just 18? Kilohertz? Oh, kilohertz. So from the lowest to the highest, that's 18 kilohertz. Let's just write that down. There is one mark for bandwidth. 18. Ding! Oh, now this one. What is the maximum frequency of the transmitted audio signal? How do we know this? Huh? Frequency of signal. FS. Ah, remember the FS? How do you find FS? Maximum frequency of audio signal. Hmm. If you forgot, 
how to find fs fs is from the carrier frequency to the highest this is the signal the largest frequency that you can send not largest the highest frequency that you can send um, so high pitch oh? so what is this one half of the bandwidth all you can find what is 918 minus 909 Ah yeah, this one is going to be 9 kilohertz. Or you could think of it as bandwidth divided by 2. Bandwidth chopped into 2. Because here is another part. Okay, so remember signal, the maximum you can send is uh, 9 kilohertz. So it's going to write up here, 9 kilohertz. Now, don't just write 9 because of this bomb. Look at the unit. Hello. Hertz. Oh. So, 9 kilohertz is 9,000 hertz. Oh, you don't got trap. Tricky, tricky. Okay. So, the idea is um, you are sending information, right? This is quite small, actually. You want to send more information, you need a bigger bandwidth. So, in this diagram here, Information not very, not very, not a lot lah. Only nine kilohertz of information. What if I make the bandwidth larger? Maybe I did this. Dum, 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 dum. Ah, this one larger bandwidth can send more info. Probably more than nine kilohertz lah. Higher frequency. Ah, that's how we can say that. Okay, so that's the first idea of how you can think of amplitude modulation and similar calculations to this. Make sure you're familiar with that before we put amplitude modulation and frequency modulation, everything together. Okay, in the next video, we're going to jump over to the basics of frequency modulation and learn more about that. But that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.